Judith to connect with us. I think she's having some problem with her Skype. So as soon as uh, she come, uh, we'll uh, we'll try to connect with her. But uh, don't worry, we have uh, plenty of information to share with you uh, because we pre-recorded her uh, in Yerevan, but we wanted she tell us about her trip to Garabagh, about this Garabagh school doing these essays and stuff like that. But uh, this is uh, this is the story of uh, oh, look like uh, so. All right, so uh, so the story is uh, about this this Armenian wonderful woman uh, named Zabel Yasayan. And the, uh, Judith Saran is where supposed to be our guest today. Uh, she's trying uh, to get her Skype working, but uh, the story is, uh, and uh, this she she translated all her books, and I think they even wrote it. Uh, but this is uh, Zabelia Saran. She's a human rights activist, and she's a writer, and she even witnessed uh, Adena massacre. And we went even uh, visited the house she lived in, and here is uh, is a little bit, and you could see Judith is explaining that this is a house in Yerevan. I, I rang the doorbell. And uh, it's a very kind this woman. Is, um, this is Judith Sarayan. I was interested in the. I, I rang the doorbell, and uh, it's a very kind woman. Um, Esma, 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 the home of Zabel Yesayan. So Ah, okay. Yeah. And so um, I remember. Yes, and this building is the uh, building where Zabel Yesayan lived uh, from 1934 <laughs> to 1937. Um, she lived in this building. There were several apartments. And it was built by Bohos Lubar Pasha, who uh, was the head of the AGBU, the Armenian General Benevolent Union. Mm -hmm. uh, so this home or this building was known as the Bohos Lubar Pasha House or the House of the Professors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this and uh, this is Arakel Arakel. So this is, is my husband. So this is your husband. Was. He was your husband. Mm -hmm. And this is also a painting of. Uh, yes, oh, Arakel, yes. Arakel Yan. It's a uh, student. His yes. student years. Yes. yes. I see. I see. Him. That's him too. Oh, it's him. Is, that's uh, it. It is not uh, self-portrait. Ilan Hornegana. Yes. So his his uh, father, Arakel Arakelian's father, Cedrak Arakelian. Cedrak Arakelian. He is a uh, famous uh, painter. Uh, famous yeah, painter. His son was Arakel, Arakelian, and that and she, Esma was married to Arakel. Arakel. His wife. This was yeah, Arakel. And his wife. Ah, look, Girka, Chunek, yes, Karuga. This Girka, Katam, Karuga, Chunek. Yes, my nakhidak, Kirchi. Do you want to sit? No, 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 still, still. Okay, good. Yes, Arakel, Arakel, Yes, Arakel, Arakel, Yes, Arakel, uh, <laughs> Look like we're not able to get her, but uh, okay. So I'm gonna run uh, her pre-recorded uh, video. You could see it when she came. When we were able to connect, then uh, I would bring her here live. So here is uh, the pre-recorded in Yerevan. We did this, and uh, she sort of memorized the whole things in her head. She's very passionate uh, about uh, Zabir legacy, 
and uh, really, really very interesting. You gotta look at it. So here is. Thank you very much, Wally. I'm very pleased to be here, and I, um, I'm really glad we met last night by by chance. And it gives us a wonderful opportunity to talk about the project that we're doing in Artsakh. And I will go back a few years um, to tell you a little bit about. Uh, Zabel Yesayan and how we we got to know about her writing and her work. Um, almost seven years ago, uh, we saw a short film about her life and her work, and uh, it was made by two young women um, in Armenia, one from Armenia, one from uh, Istanbul. And after we saw this film, we decided that we needed to translate her works into English um, so that she would have a much wider readership. Uh, we were really impressed with uh, her her life. Um, she lived a very exciting and unusual life, particularly for that time. And we were also very eager to learn about her writing to see, you know, what what she wrote about, what what kind of things she wrote about. Um, so we took on this project, and over the years, we've translated three of her works into English from Western Armenian. And uh, I have the books here. Um, Silidari Bardesnera, The Gardens of Silidar, which is a memoir of her childhood. Hoki Saksoryal, My Soul in Exile, which is a short novel um, about a, a creative person who lives in exile and then returns home only to experience uh, a feeling of isolation and, uh, and loss. And the third book that we translated, uh, she actually published in 1911. It's called uh, In the Ruins, Averagne Rumech, and it's her account of the aftermath of the uh, massacres of Adana, which occurred in 1909. She was there in person for three months after the massacres, and she recorded her observations. But most importantly, um, in this book, you get a very strong sense of her um, strong uh, belief in human rights, her um, her approach to um, uh, to uh, to the situation that the Armenians faced in the provinces, and her attempt to really find common ground with uh, the uh, Ottoman uh, 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 citizens or the or the people in the Young Turk. Uh, government, which had recently come to power, she was trying to find a common space for them to understand the plight of the Armenians and other minorities within the Ottoman Empire and their struggle for human rights. Um, and with that as a background, I will turn now to what we're doing in Artsakh. So in um, uh, Zavel Yassayan, as I said, was a great writer, and as we worked on this translation project, we, we, uh, we really came to understand that in addition to her brilliant literary works, she really advocated for human rights and social justice. In fact, she struggled for these um, all her life, and, uh, and, and we find out from reading her books that this was something um, that, that really um, inspired her at a very young age um, by her father and her father was a strong believer in, in human dignity and spent many hours with his, his young daughter teaching her about these issues. So um, when I met Rupen Melikian last April in Artsakh, Rupen is the human rights ombudsman uh, for uh, the Republic of Artsakh, uh, we talked about the human rights essay contest that they had done last year. And uh, then I suggested and he concurred that we work on a project together um, with uh, using the work and the writing of Yesayan um, as a basis for the human rights <coughs> contest this upcoming school year. And so we got to work right away. Um, we decided to use the Gardens of Silidar, the memoir of her childhood, because this human rights essay contest will be based on the, um, or will be focused towards uh, high school students. Uh, for students from the grades of 9 through 12. And we wanted to use a book that they would identify with. And we felt that her childhood, growing up in Bolis, um, would be the appropriate book to use. Uh, so we uh, went through the book, we picked out the excerpts that related to human rights, and we translated them from Western to Eastern Armenian so that the students would find the writing more accessible. And uh, we uh, now are, are ready. We launched the contest on September 1st. Um, and we are going to go to all the schools in Artsakh, 
Uh, we're going to be announcing the contest to all the schools, all the teachers, uh, so that the students will know about, about the contest. And we're going to be asking them to write an essay uh, based on two topics. Why are human rights important? And how do they re relate to the writings of Zabel Yesayan and to her life, um, based on the excerpts that they'll read? Um, what's really exciting about this is that um, uh, Zabel Yesayan is virtually unknown in Artsakh. And uh, this will be an opportunity for students, their parents, uh, their families, um, and the community to learn about the work and the, um, the struggle of this very, very significant Armenian personage. She, she, as I said, led an exciting life. She was very active in the most important events in Armenian history um, uh, from the early 1900s um, onward. She um, lived uh, for many years. Well, she, she uh, was born in Bolis in 1878. She uh, went to Paris to study at the Sorbonne at the very young age of 17. Um, on her own, um, and uh, this was obviously not easy for her. She was probably the first or one of the first women from the Ottoman Empire to pursue higher education overseas. Um, and then um, after she spent time in Paris, she returned back to Bolis and she started to work right away um, in uh, uh, working on newspapers as an editor, uh, writing articles and continuing uh, to write her creative works, um, including a short novel she wrote called Phony Geniuses, which is ac was actually a satire of some of the fellow writers and colleagues in, in um, the Armenian um, community. So she wasn't afraid of controversy. And uh, as a result of that, she became very well known and was asked by the Patriarchate to go to Adana in 1909 after the massacres and actually to help the orphans and the victim survivors of the massacres and to observe conditions. So um, she, she, as I said, was, you know, was very involved in many of the most important events in Armenian history um, from this period. In 1915, she was on the blacklist of the intellectuals who were targeted for arrest. She wasn't home and she immediately went into hiding in Bolis and then was able to escape and went to Bulgaria working on behalf of her colleagues, on, uh, on behalf of the Armenians um, in the Ottoman Empire. And then she had to escape again and she went to Baku and took down eyewitness accounts of the genocide uh, from survivors. Um, and she published the very first eyewitness account um, by uh, a person named Haig Toroyan, um, who, who told her his experiences, and she recorded it and wrote it down. And this is one of the hallmarks of her writing, that she does record the accounts of the victim survivors. She is able to allow them to speak through her writing. And this, again, was a very unique literary uh, approach that she took, and, and something that was quite um, unusual and certainly had not been done um, by other Armenian writers and in fact was a very unusual literary technique in general. And then uh, she went on from there to uh, present uh, a paper at the Paris Peace Conference in 1919 invited by Bokhoz Nubar Pasha. She lived in France and then decided to emigrate to Armenia in 1933. Uh, and she came with her son, well actually her son came a year later, she came um, in 1933 with her daughter and then um, became a professor at Yerevan State University. Um, she continued to write novels and this is where she wrote her beautiful account of her childhood, Silidari Bardesnera. Uh, and it was published in Yerevan in 1935. So, um, you know, here is a woman who lived a very unusual life, um, who, who's, whose uh, history and life spans Western and Eastern Armenia. She was arrested in 1937 um, because she s supported uh, many of the other Armenian writers and uh, in particular Charens. Um, she was called an enemy of the people. She was actually sentenced to death but then she wrote a letter while she was in prison um, and to the head of the uh, Ministry of uh, uh, the military tribunals and was able to get her sentence commuted to 10 years in the labor camps. But we don't know what happened to her. Um, after five to six years in prison, um, all traces of what happened to Zabel Yesayan do disappear. But we believe because of this 
um, incredible struggle and dedication to, to human rights um, and to the Armenians, that she deserves to be brought back and to be well understood by the people, not only of Artsakh and Armenia, but really the people of the world. She is indeed a universal figure, and, and uh, it's because of her um, incredible um, focus on, on, on not only the Armenians, but all peoples. She was tremendously empathetic. She understood the suffering of the others. She was able to humanize um, not only the, the people that she, her, of her own community, but people who were considered the enemy. She was able to humanize them and try to find ways of finding common ground. And this indeed makes her a very universal figure. Um, so we are looking forward to the essays that the students are going to write. We are also working not only with the Human Rights Ombudsman, um, but Tufenkin Foundation, um, which does a lot of work in Artsakh, and the National Association for Armenian Studies and Relief, which is based in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, also, I have to give credit to the Armenian International Women's Association, which has taken on the Zabel Yasayan Translation Project. And I also want to point out that TUMO in Stepanagert is going to work with us and help us to reach the students um, in Artsakh uh, through a project that they will do to help design t-shirts related to the contest. So we've got a really strong group of people working with us, a strong uh, community of organizations that are, are working with us. And uh, as a result of that, we think we'll be able to reach a large audience of students in Artsakh and, uh, and uh, really get a, a good uh, number of, of essays and, and have a lot of the students engaged in this, in this, in this process. Um, a couple of other things that I, w I would like to talk about is that we are going to have 18 judges, um, six from Artsakh, six from Yere uh, Armenia, six from the diaspora, and they include uh, people from the diaspora like um, Antonia Aslan, Arslan, who wrote the beautiful book Skylark Farm. Um, we will also have Alexander Yesayan, who is the grandson of Zabel Yesayan. He is also going to be a judge in the contest, and he uh, teaches at Yerevan State University in the field of genetics. Um, and uh, there will be many others, uh, notable um, Armenians who are focused on human rights, and, uh, and uh, this will be really a, a very all-inclusive type um, contest where we're trying to really encourage people to become engaged, to become engaged in this process. We think it's, it's really exciting. Um, it's exciting not only for the legacy of Zabel Yasayan, but most importantly for the young people of Artsakh to get a chance to express themselves about issues that are very important for their lives and for their future. And uh, with that, I think I will um, uh, take a break now and see if you have any questions. This is just keep it. Okay. This is an amazing story. How did you land into this? Well, um, this is a good question. I, um, I would say that I've always been very interested in literature and history, and uh, I, I would look for translations of Armenian uh, books um, when I was young, and I would find some translations, not a lot, but there were, there were some that I could find uh, it, at Nasser, the National Association for Armenian Studies and Research. They have a nice um, library and bookstore, and I would read whatever I could find. Um, and it really, though, wasn't until I heard about Zabel Yesayan, you know, through the documentary made by Lara Aharonian and Talin Suchian, um, that I realized that there was this very powerful uh, woman who, who had uh, written, um, you know, so many interesting works, not only novels, but also um, a memoir, uh, eyewitness testimony, articles, um, and she was a revelation to me. And it was very exciting to discover her. So it was, it's really been like a path of discovery um, and, and a very exciting journey because as I've worked on this project, every, it seems like every day, every week, I learn something new about Zabel Yasayan, and I'm very happy to say that her legacy is really growing now. Um, it's, uh, it's been, um, a really gratifying part of working on this project. Um, lots of people in France, of course, know about her because she lived in France and she published in France. Um, she also, uh, there are several scholars in France who've been following her 
works. Um, there have been several translations into French, but also now in Turkish, there are several people who uh, have focused on Yesayan's work and have translated her work into Turkish. Uh, there's, there are a group of women at Bogazici University who are performing a play that they've written about Zabel Yesayan. They initially performed it in 2015, but they have been um, revising it and trying to be, make it a, a, a longer play, more inclusive, and uh, they're performing this newer version today. Um, and then there, uh, there's a, 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 a street, or a ruelle in France, that was recently named after her, um, and that was announced about six months ago by the mayor of Paris and Hidalgo. Um, so as you can see, in addition to the work we've been doing and the work that's happening here in Armenia, that her, her, um, her work, her writing, and uh, her beliefs, her legacy in human rights and social justice are really spreading around the world. And to me, this is extraordinarily inspiring. And uh, I think that's why I've become so um, de devoted and dedicated to this project. Now, what is your, well, first, what is your organization name? What is, uh, what is your professional background? Okay, well, um, I'll start with my professional background. I worked for 37 years in finance in Boston. Um, and uh, after 37 years, I, I decided that it was time to take a break and to do something um, more along the lines of, of, the, uh, of you know, my interests in literature and history. Um, I was lucky that I had already started working on the project. Um, we, uh, there's a small group of us from the Armenian International Women's Association in the Boston area that got together on a regular basis and, and step by step we pursued uh, this project to translate her works. <laughs> and uh, we started okay. with uh, the Gardens of Silidar and My Soul in Exile. Okay. We had to find translators because uh, none of us were really capable of doing that. You really need to have people who are, um, you know, who are uh, really uh, dedicated translators. We were okay. very Hold lucky that we found a young woman named Jennifer Manukian um, who uh, had done uh, her uh, college thesis on the early years of Zabel Yesayan and had already started to translate some of her very short works, uh, some of her early short stories and uh, some of her, a few of her poems. Uh, so we were really excited because we wanted uh, her to translate the Gardens of Silidar. Um, we also uh, worked with uh, G. M. Goshkarian, who's an excellent translator. He lives in Berlin and in, in um, pa uh, not Paris, but Tours in France. And he, um, you know, he wanted to work on this project as well, so he translated My Soul in Exile and uh, In the Ruins, Averagne Rumech. But uh, the whole process did require us to, you know, to be involved in the editing process and, of course, uh, the the design of the Do books, the publication, uh, and the promotion, you and you know this myself. is a big part of, mm. of uh, book publishing. Obviously, is that you've got to you can't just publish the book and um, call it a day. You, uh, it's very important to get the word out there. So that's what I I do. Um, you know when I'm um, uh, when I have the opportunity, I go and speak at bookstores. I speak in you know, in front of organizations. We've traveled even to London and, of course, to Armenia to talk about Zabel Yassayan. And now, you know, here we are, um, you know, working on this project in Artsakh. So it's really, um, it's been expanding and it's, it's uh, you know, it's growing. It's very exciting. Um, so you guys went well, to Karabakh and came we're back and you're going the again. Video. Let the video finish then. Maybe we'll so talk. We'll see. why did you go first place and you come back and you want to go again? Well, um, Yes, we went to Garabakh uh, about a week ago, or well, almost two weeks ago now, and uh, you know we went with the Dufenkian Association, and they are actually uh, co-sponsors of the uh, essay, Human Rights Essay Contest, um, and we went there to to just go in and and visit various locations where they're working. But what was really exciting, and I forgot to mention earlier, is. Um, is back in April when I, I was also with the Tufenkian Association, we went to Arajamyur, which is a small <laughs> um, village that the Tufenkian Association has helped to establish um, in, in Artsakh. And when we went there, 
we realized, uh, you know, to my surprise, that there's a school named after Zabel Yesayan. And that had been done about 10 years ago, but I didn't know about it. So um, that helped to um, motivate us to do this contest. So we actually, this time around, when we went to Arajamul, we announced the launch of the contest there on September 1st, along with Ruben Melikian, the human rights ombudsman, and the uh, principal of the school, and Alexander Yesayan, the grandson of Zabel Yesayan. So um, why are we going back? Well, we're going back partly because we do love Artsakh so much and we thought it would be uh, a great opportunity to go to the wine festival in Tolk, but also I will have a chance to speak about Zabel Yesayan at a, at a relatively new uh, venue called Roots, uh, which is in Stepanagert, and at uh, Roots they give opportunities to people who are writers, musicians, painters to you know to present and and to talk about their work. So I will be going there and uh, having an opportunity to to speak directly with the people um, in Stepanagert about the project. When is the festival? Oh, the festival is coming up on September the 16th. It's a Saturday. It's in Tolk, uh, in the Hadrut region. And uh, as I understand it, it's great fun. I heard there were more than 2,000 people last year and that they're expecting even more this year. And there's music and dance and food and uh, crafts. So um, I'm looking forward to that. And when is the judgment date? The, um, the, the actual um, date that the, um, the uh, winners will be announced is December 10th which is International, International Human Rights Day. Um, the, uh, the students will, um, will ha have to um, submit their essays uh, by the end of October, um, and they will be judged by the group of judges uh, during November. Where? Um, well, they'll be, uh, the, the judges will uh, review these um, essays, you know, uh, wherever the judges are located. So we'll be sending the essays uh, to the judges um, online, they will get. There will be two rounds of, of review. Um, they will be uh, judged based on six criterion, and then after the first round, uh, we will pick the top 12 essays, and those top 12 essays will then be reviewed again by the judges. And so then after that, uh, we'll find we'll, we'll we'll pick the top three essays. There'll be a first, second, and third prize, and the prizes will include um, items like. Um, you know, laptop computers and uh, tablets. Wow, great. Judith, thank you very much. This was great. Thank I never, you. I never heard of this, <laughs> but this is great. I uh, appreciate your time, and I wish you all the best. And uh, if you have to say the last word, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you, Wally. This is a great um, honor to be able to speak with you today, and I appreciate your interest in Zabel Yesayan. I mean, to me, this is, you know, this is part of the process, is really to, to get the word out and uh, to let people know about what a, what a fantastic writer she, she was and uh, also what, a, what, a, uh, what an important personage. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Very good. Now, do you see yourself? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, Judith, welcome. Nice to Thank see you again. Well, it's nice to this see you is again. The, this is the problem with communication. Either we get um, Facebook working or or the Skype not working. So, uh, but today Facebook was working perfectly. So we run your pre-recorded. Just tell us a little bit about your. Uh, your trip to uh, to uh, Garabal, you know the uh, the schools that you went and all that stuff. Well, we uh, started um, on our trip on August 29th to to Garabal, and uh, we went to Arajamu, and uh, we were able to launch the human rights essay contest uh, in Artsakh at Arajamu School which has been named after Zabel Yesayan. So that um, uh, was a very important um, moment for us. Uh, we were with Alexander Yesayan, the grandson of Zabel Yesayan, as well as her great-grandson, Dikan Yesayan. Um, also with us uh, was uh, Ruben Melikian, who um, uh, is the ombudsman 
for uh, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. He's the human rights advocate uh, for Artsakh. Yeah, sorry for uh, for a minute there. Uh, something uh, something happened there because uh, I I just wanna move you. Okay, just just continue. Okay. And so uh, so this essay, you know, we ask you this in pre-recording, uh, but how long you 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 stayed in Karabakh the last time you went? So. Um, uh, so you're referring to this time that I went um, in, after I in, met in, you. Oh, after I met. Okay, so that this, then I returned to Garabakh for a very short uh, weekend, um, uh, a few days later. So it was a, a weekend that was the time of the Artsakh uh, wine festival, and uh, during that weekend I was able to speak at Roots, which is a, a beautiful uh, art cafe right in Stepanagert, and and uh, there I, I spoke about Zabel Yesayan to. Uh, to a group of people who are very interested in learning more about her and learning about the contest. So how many uh, students do you think they're going to write those essays? Well, we hope there'll be at least a hundred. Uh, last year there was... <laughs> that would be good. Oh, I know, it would be great. Um, last year they had 60 students participate in the essay contest, um, but that was uh, based on a more... Um, the more uh, universal question of uh, why are human rights important? This year, the question will be expanded to include uh, how do the students relate to the passages from the Gardens of Silidar that we included in the essay contest. Can you say this stuff in Armenian? Because there are some people in Ar Armenian in Yerevan, they don't understand English. Um, as, uh, uh, September Megin. Um, you have Araja Mulch to Brotzin Mech, Menk Voroshet Sink, Vorais Mertsum, Vidunena, Artsahi, Yerdasart Neru Hamar, Ashagert Neru Hamar, Yev Rupen Melikian, Yev Yes, Iraru Het Voroshet Sink for Bidi, I don't know, uh, we're going to uh, hold this essay contest. Um, uh, as uh, their thoughts uh, about uh, the meaning of Martu uh, Iravutner. Um, Irens Hamar. If Asigashad Garavor Nute, Artsahi Mech, Vorovodev Yergrin, Irens Artsahi Martignere, Irens Yergrin, Gabash Panen, Yev Shad Asank Garavor. They're fighting for their, their freedoms, they're fighting for their rights, uh, their right for self-determination, but also their right to, to continue to be Armenian. And I think that's Tishvare Hayren Ovesel, for Parere Amen Parere Chen Karin Zipaitz, Irens Iravunk Hai Menal, Asigashat Garevor Iravunke, Yev. Artsakh Mech, uh Asank As Iravuk uh Iravuk Nera G Gbashpanen. Um Artsakh Martignet. Who is sponsoring these things? Um the sponsor of the contest is the human rights ombudsman um of Artsakh. It's uh Ruben Melikian. Um and he sponsored the contest last year. Um, in addition, uh, we're working with uh, Tumo Stepanagert uh, to also uh, work with us on the contest, as well as the Tufenkian Foundation and the National Association for Armenian Studies and Research, uh, based here in Boston. So it's a big thing. It's amazing. Yes. It's amazing how you are passionately following uh, this uh, legacy of uh, Zabel Yasean. It's just. It's incredible. You spend so much time translating those books, um, 
Did you write any books or mostly you translated? Well, we worked as a group on this project. So I, I don't want to take credit for doing the translation. We actually hired excellent translators, including Jennifer Manukian. Uh, from um, uh, she's now currently at UCLA, and also uh, GM Goshkarian, who uh, lives overseas in in Europe, and uh, they were the ones who did the translations for us. I was uh, very much uh, involved in editing the books, and um, I myself do some writing. Um, however, I have not published any books as of yet. But I uh, I really felt that uh, the works of Zabel Yasayan were extremely important to make available to a wider audience because she really, um, you know, spoke very uh, passionately and, and fought very uh, bravely for human rights at a time when it was, it was extremely dangerous to do so, uh, both in the Ottoman Empire, where she was targeted uh, for arrest in 1915. Um, she was able to escape. Um, but later then in Soviet Armenia and the Soviet Union, where she was also targeted for arrest. But this time in 1937, she was in fact arrested and imprisoned and died under mysterious circumstances. So here is a person who, who fought bravely all her life for what she believed in. And, uh, and I think it, it sends a very important message to us today that, uh, you know, we're living in times when, um, you know, in Armenia, in Artsakh and, and all around the world, um, it's really extremely important for people to use their voice and and to fight for their beliefs, and um, you know, and these are these are issues that are are really of um, universal importance, and and that's why I think that she uh, speaks loudly for not only the Armenians but but for really all human beings that uh, she has carried a a, a, um, a torch uh, for all human beings, and it's a torch that I think that you know will shine very brightly uh, for uh, for many years to come. When uh, when they took her, like I guess Soviets time, how old was she? Do you know? Yes, she was. Um, uh, it was in 1937, uh, so she was uh, 59 years old, um, and she uh, she remained alive in prison. Um, she was moved from prison to prison, but she remained alive in prison until um, uh, for the next five years. So until she was 64 years old. Uh, then she died um, under mysterious circumstances. Um, we know that she was sentenced to death by the military tribunal of the Soviet Union. This was the tribunal that was um, that was uh, really uh, arresting and 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 uh, sending people to the gulags and and also um, sentencing people to death uh, during the Stalinist purge uh, during that time of terror. Um, she uh, was sentenced to death, but she managed to get her uh, sentence commuted by writing a letter to the, um, the, head, uh, the head of the military tribunal in Russia. And uh, they commuted her sentence to 10 years in a labor camp. Um, and then, uh, as, we, as far as we know, she uh, uh, was sent to Baku, probably was there for transit reasons, um, but then we, we lose uh, contact with her. The last letter she wrote to her, uh, to her two children who were living in Yerevan uh, was on uh, uh, June 27th, 1942. That was the last time. So um, was she married? She had been married. Yes, she was married to Dikran Yesayan. Her uh, maiden name was Zabel Hovanesian. Um, she married him uh, when she was living in Paris. Uh, and uh, she had met him originally in, in Istanbul, and then she came back to Istanbul after she lived in Paris to study at the Sorbonne. Oh, I see. Do, do you know any trace of their children or any of that? Well, yes. So her children um, then lived uh, in, in Yerevan, and they, of course, wanted to stay in touch with their, with their mother, but it was very difficult for them because during this time, uh, during the terror, uh, people were scared, uh, you know, and it was uh, it was very hard to stay in touch. However, we know that she wrote letters to her son and daughter, and they wrote back to her. Um, and we also know that her daughter met with her uh, twice while she was in prison in Yerevan. So in her early years, she was imprisoned in uh, prison in Yerevan, and her daughter saw her twice during one summer, and uh, she commented on this in a in a long letter she wrote, which is not, a, uh, the letter is not public, uh, but we're trying to get access to it so that we can get 
you know, we can possibly translate it and have it available but, because it talks a lot about her experience in prison. But did you have a chance to find out the children or grandchildren or something? Yes. In fact, um, um, this trip that, uh, that I took to um, Arsakh, I met the grandson, Alexander Yesayan, and his son, uh, Dikran Yesayan. Hmm. So the and the great grandson of Zabel Yesayan. I met with them. Um, we spoke at length. Um, he did not remember his grandmother because he was born after she had died, but he had heard many stories from his father. Uh, so he was the, the um, uh, son of, of um, Herant Yesayan, who was Zabel Yesayan's uh, wow. son. Well, we're going to bring you again in because now, now that you get your Skype working, uh, so maybe when we'll see what other during the essays and who win, we like to see those kids uh, who who won this essay, and that would be great. And I'm sorry for this communication. Uh, now now that you get your computer working, uh, <laughs> because always there is something. You know, yesterday we had we were able to connect with Australia live, the Thailand live. But Facebook was not cooperating, so it's communication always says something. But anyway, we at yes. least got you in, and uh, we thank you very much. And uh, we'll because we have, I think, a few seconds, so I'll give you a chance to say whatever you want, and we'll go from there. Well, I just want to finish with a, a, a quote from Yesayan, um, which I, I think really sums up her her beliefs. Uh, she said, literature is not an ornament, uh, a pleasant pastime, a pretty flower. Literature is a weapon to struggle against injustice. And I think that really um, tells you a lot about uh, who she was and, and what she stood for. Judith, thank you very much. And uh, I mean, before we go, you know, we, I keep telling people like all this stuff I just accidentally land. People don't believe me. Remember how long we met be before we decided next day we'll have interview? Yes. Um, I remember minutes, that right? we met two minutes, right. <laughs> we met right outside the restaurant um, in Yerevan and uh, we were, we were uh, waiting for a table. And then um, I think you said, uh, here's your, my card in case you're interested or you, you need to, you know, you have something to talk about. And so when I looked at your card, I said, oh, yes, I, of course I have something to talk about. <laughs> and so well, um, then next yeah. day we were having interview. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, yeah, yeah, it was it was a, a good meeting. And uh, I really appreciate your, um, you know, your support and enthusiasm uh, for Zabel Yesayan. And, and I'm glad we got the chance to talk today um, after our, you know, initial uh, technology uh, yeah. uh, issues. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm sure that we're going to slowly getting this better, better, better. But yeah, we should have practiced it. But, uh, you know, see, because I didn't know, like, I thought you you, you have all that stuff. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Say hello to your husband. And uh, thanks for the, the lunch you bought us. That was a good place. I mean, it was amazing. Like, in front is a bookstore, but in the back, they have such a nice restaurant, you know. And you walk by there, you'll never know that, you know. But thank you, you and your husband, we find out that. All right, well, you take care, and thank you very much. Thank you, and, Wally. Yeah. Thank you very much. So thank you for watching. This is uh, another episode of Gag Rule Live, and we'll just bring you as much as we can those information. And have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah.